all, but it says to give unto them, Zion. It's a, it's a, a possessive pronoun. Keep reading. The oil of joy for mourning, uh -huh. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Right. That they might be called trees of righteousness. That they, not all. That they might be called trees of righteousness. You read it. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Uh -huh. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. Uh, four, middle of four. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. So, are we agreed so far with the gospel to the nation of Zion as, as the Messiah is calling? Because when we started the conversation, uh, and I had the same understanding growing up too, that it was for everybody. But when I started studying the Bible, and you read it contextually, and you read it for what it says verbatim, it's not saying everybody, it's saying Zion, the nation of Israel, because these people today. There's other Israelites scattered around the world, right? They were dispersed to four corners, but a vast majority of these people here, these are the children of Israel today. They just not call themselves Israelites. We forgot that we were Israelites. Let me get uh, Jeremiah 17, 4. So we're going to keep reading. So the gospel is, uh, if you don't mind me asking, where are you from? Originally. Puerto Rican, right? Boricua, right? So did you know the indigenous Puerto Ricans, the Taino, they spoke a Hebraic type of dialect. It was the same kind of language like the people of the Bible. Okay. For example, what do you call somebody that lives in the Champo of Puerto Rico? How do you say Hebrew and Spanish? It's the same word. Exactly. It's different enunciations because there's different people saying the word. Hebreo and Hibaro is the same thing. For example, um, uh, in Puerto Rico, right, they found, in the University of Puerto Rico, they found 800 stone tablets, and these 800 stone tablets, they found uh, Hebraic writings on it. How did the Tainos talk the language of the Bible if they're not the people from the Bible? And you're halfway across the world. You have no interaction with these people. So the only way you could have taught this language is to give the people from the Bible that left the Middle East, then the dispersion of the Northern Kingdom, and you ended up here in America. So this is what we're teaching our people. Our people don't know this. So we were taught that we were part Puerto, Puerto, Puerto Rico means rich port. Right, but we're, we're more than a, a rich port. A rich port is what the Spaniards called them because they stole so much gold from Puerto Rico. But what, were the, what did the Puerto Ricans call them from? They didn't call them from uh, Puerto Rico. They, that was given to them. That's not what they self-identified. They identified as Taino culturally, but that was the language, the Taino language, right? But when you go back and trace the history, they're the children of Israel, according to God. So there's certain things biblically that pertain to, right? But let me show you why they forgot. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. This is the prophet Jeremiah giving a prophecy to our forefathers, telling our forefathers what's going to happen to us, right? So let's read. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance. So it says we can discontinue from our heritage, meaning our, 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 our lineage, our culture, our, our customs, our practices, our language. We will discontinue, meaning we will not continue in that practice. Read it again from the top. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage. So you people will no longer call yourself who you are, think who you are Israelite, keep the customs of the children of Israel. Keep reading. That I gave thee, that God gave thee, that he gave us the commandments, right? You read it. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies. That's here in America, right? When the conquistadors came to Spain, uh, from, from Spain to Puerto Rico, they made these, the, the Tainos and the indigenous people serve, let go, and they, and they brought their riches. Therefore, on a rich port. Read. In the land which thou knowest not. But this time was given. Nobody knew about this land here. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Because we upset our God. We are breaking the commandments. We are killing each other, worshiping idols, doing everything that God put us not to do. We are doing anything, and therefore He punished us. He took our memory, our heritage, not our memory, our heritage of who we were, and scattered us to the four corners. So that in the times where people start gathering and children, reminding them you're not a Puerto Rican, you're not African American, you're not Jamaican, you're my children. I called you Benjamin, I called you Judah, I called you Ephraim. This is what God calls us. This is what man calls us. So we teach my people to identify with what our God calls for us. Make sense? Yep. Uh, do you have any questions? I know I've been. No, it's a lot. I've been yeah. If you have any questions about anything, it's one. Where does that come from? Like, so, how do you know that you guys are actually one? So, what, there's a certain term for these people, yes? Uh, uh, Haitians, West, West uh, Caribbean people, right? Like Jamaicans and African Americans, they're all called Negroes or the Edward, right? I don't want to get, but there's a word that calls speaking, right? So let's give these 
That word is given the Bible. Talking about the Jews. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. So the teachers in this time, they were the, the Jews that received the gospel first, and the Jews had to go out. They followed the Jews. Peter was a Jew. James was a Jew. They received the gospel first, and they were out to receive the teachers first, right? So the Jews are the teachers, and the prophets were for the Bible, right? So let's see what these Jews were being called. Read. As Barnabas and Simeon, uh -huh. that was called nigger. That's called what? Nigger. What they called? Nigger. That's what they were called the Jews back then. The same way they called the Jews back today. The only disconnect is we forgot we were the children of Israel. We forgot we were the Jews of the Bible. But the Bible said that that term is only used for one people. There's never anywhere in the world that you hear that term used for anybody else besides these people. These are the Jews. We can keep going, for example, do you know the the true image of the Messiah, he was like a dark skin. So we'll, 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 So now that you know the Jews are being called negro, negro, nigger, right? Black man, right? You understand that the people today calling themselves are being that are still being called nigger, negro, they're the Jews of the Bible. Because the Bible just calls them that. It's witnessing that they were called that, right? So let's read Revelation because the Messiah was one, a negro too then, because he was a Jew like the rest. So, uh, what kind of hair would you say uh, uh, negro has? Like woolly, sheep like hair, like sheep hair, right? Happy hair. Right, like a sheep. Like a wool, a wool texture. Let's read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 15. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So when it's talking about the Son of Man, it's from the fire, right? So let's see the depiction of the Messiah. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, uh -huh. and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So tell me which one of these images makes more sense what we're about to read, right? These images up top, or those images on the bottom, right? So it says he has a garment down to the foot, right? Let's read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Like what? White like wool. So they were bright white and woolly in texture. Who has wool type hair here? This people are this, this, this image down there. Let's keep reading. As white as snow. Same thing, right? Keep going. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So his eyes were blue or green. They were red like fire in all his images. Keep reading. And his feet like unto fine brass. Your feet match your arms, right? You're not like multicolored, right? Right. Uh, we have to understand what color brass is, right? Brass is a derivative of brown. It's a brownish color, right? And when you burn it, in ancient times, it will look like this. If you look up ancient burnt brass, burnt bronze, burnt copper, they will burn it like this to get the moisture out so it doesn't rust. So they will always be burned. So let's keep reading. As if they burned in a furnace. This color. If I put uh, uh, rice and I keep it on the furnace, what's going to happen? What color is it going to turn? If I put bread in the furnace, what color is going to turn? Paper? Wood? Read it again. And his feet like unto fine brass, uh -huh. as if they burned in a furnace. Estaba quemado, like they burned. So he was a dark skinned man with an actual woolly hair and red eyes. So who was this image down there then? That they put on all the churches and everywhere around the world. So when you look him up, it's a man called Cesar de Borgia, right? He was the son of uh, Pope Alexander of Rome in the 1600s. They chose to depict the Messiah to look like this and, and took away the proper image and gave us the false image of the beast. So when the Bible and Revelation talks about there's a false image at end times, that's the false image that confused the whole world. This is the real, not per se, right, but this is a more accurate and more in line vision of what the Messiah would have looked like. Con negro, like the rest of the Jews, and this is the true image, are the, the true image, but that is definitely the false image, and that's intentional. So who gave us that image? You'll find 
to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory. The adoption of sons, to be adopted back in. When they talked about the grafting back in, it was grafting these uh, uh, Northern Kingdom tribes back to the tribe of Judah to make them one tribe, of one nation. Because after uh, King Solomon died, these three tribes, right, became the Jews, and everybody here became the state of Israel. And they had a division amongst them. It was like a civil war. But they never mended at this. So what the Messiah came to do is to teach, to fix that, that, that broken branch, to mend it back. That's the adoption. Let's be freedom. And the glory. The kingdom of heaven is the glory. God's glory. When it comes down. Let's be freedom. And the covenants. The old. It said covenants. Plural. The old covenant was for these people, right? The children of Israel. It's like that covenant. So the old and new covenant is for these people, which is you. And the giving of the law. So these people got the law, correct? On Mount Sinai, when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, he gave it to these people. Keep reading. And the service of God and the promises. So it made us the servant. The service of God makes you the servant. So when God's servant is these people, and the promises came to his servants, which are these people. So why didn't Paul say the promises to the Christians? Why, why, why act that they're going rest? He's still saying this because this is for the children of Israel. It isn't everybody fighting. If you go to a church, they will never tell you. This New Testament, they won't teach you. They'll make sure I've never heard that verse from the church. Have you? Right. But you want the promise of God. You want to be part of his company. You want to be in his glory. So then you have to be an Israelite. Because the Christian, being a Christian, according to Paul, is not going to do that. It's Paul saying everything that he teaches, that, that everybody desires, he identified it for these people. And he never said anybody that's happened. So that's why God only gave the covenant that he just said to these people, the old and new covenant. So this is what we're teaching, that the, the Christian doctrine, right? For example, they teach us who fought the work to celebrate Christmas. Is that, is that a Buddhist holiday? Is that a, is that a Muslim holiday? It's a Christian Catholic holiday. Right, but the Bible says don't do that. We're going to show you what the Bible says don't do Christmas, but then the Christian Catholic takes to do it, right? So let's read. This is in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10. And verse 1, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So God speaketh, it's not Jeremiah speaking, it's God speaking to us. Let's see what God says, read. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith who? Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith me. Thus, Thus saith, saith the Lord. Lord. The most high, the God we believe in is saying this. Let's read. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So there's a, there's a thing that the heathens are doing, right? And you're not supposed to be dismayed by it, lured by it, right? Uh, uh, interrupted by it, right? Let's keep reading. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Uh -huh. For the customs of the people are vain. So it's, it's a vain custom, a worthless custom that we're about to hear about, right? Let's keep reading. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. How do you get the Christmas tree into your house? It comes out of the forest, no? Let's keep reading. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. He needs an axe to bring that Christmas tree to your house, right? He needs to cut the tree down, right? Let's keep reading. They deck it with silver and with gold. De they decorate this tree now that they cut down with the axe with silver and gold. What else do they do with the tree? They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. If you don't put the, 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 the things on the bottom of the Christmas tree, is it going to fall? It's going to move. You have to put those things so it doesn't move. Go ahead, keep reading. They are upright as the palm tree. Is the Christmas tree up like these palm trees? It stands like the palm trees, right? Keep reading. But speak not. Because it doesn't speak. It's an idol. This, this, this in ancient Babylon was an idol. And they taught us here in America to practice the idolatry again. Keep it up. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Uh -huh. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. So this is how the religion taught us to worship this false idol, right? When you go up to your Christmas tree and you bow before it to pick up your gift, that's you bowing before that idol. And when you receive your gift, your blessing, people walk away happy. You're not supposed to bow to anything but God. But they tell you that this is all about fun and do it for the kids. But according to the Bible, this is paganism. And God directly said, don't go to the forest, don't cut a tree down. Don't decorate it with silver and gold. And how dare you put gifts up before it so you can bow before it. And pick up a, a gift or a blessing from the tree. That's taking it. The same thing with Easter. Easter is not biblical. When you practice Easter, you're worshiping the pagan god Ishtar. With the same exact name. 
the, these are both Babylonian customs. So when the, Bab, when the Bible talks about Babylon the Great at the end time, where do you think it's talking about? You won't see this practice in the Middle East. Right? Yeah. So it's not talking about the Middle East. You won't see this practice predominantly in China. Right. So Babylon the Great is practicing the same thing as old Babylon. Easter, Christmas. Those are the two main holidays in Babylon. So how is this not Babylon the Great? Right, but what's the religion of Babylon the Great? What's the most practiced religion here? Right. So that's the religion of Babylon. The numbers table. It's not my, your opinion. The most practiced religion here in America, Canada, Europe, is Christianity, or some type of Catholicism. But they teach us, and they practice this in their temples, which God said don't. So is your pastor reading the Bible? Is he studying? Is this, does this Holy Spirit move your pastor to celebrate idolatry? Because he can't say the Holy Spirit is within him and does everything opposite of the Bible. That's, that's, that's madness. Right, so then they're confused. Some of them, they, they're willingly ignorant, and some of them just never heard the truth. And when they come across the truth, then they have to sit down and reflect, and they come into the work like we do. We all, most of us grew up in Christianity, Catholicism, something like that. And then when we came to the truth, somebody's like, no, read the Bible. And they're showing us reading it. It's like, no, that's, this is the truth. It doesn't matter what the pastor says. It doesn't matter what I say. It matters what God says. And that's what we're reading to you, the truth of the Bible. The Negros are the Jews of the Bible. They gave us the false image. They have us practicing idolatry. So who would they have us worshiping on December 25th? No, but that, that, that would be my question, right? Because if you're not worshiping God, who are you worshiping? The other one. Right. Who's teaching us to worship the sake of the Bible? Because if, they, if they're the ones teaching us, then we have to we have to be mindful of it. So my question is, who, who, who taught us this? Because the Tainos didn't learn Christmas. Right. Los Lonegos didn't teach us Christmas. The Mexicans didn't create Christmas. Who created Christmas and taught us that? And what's funny too is when you actually ask the priests and pastors, they know that it goes back to paganism, but they still celebrate it anyway. Right. So then are they in your best interest? But then people give them money and they preach for prosperity gospel and all this false doctrine. And people pay them to receive these lies. Because it feels good. The truth doesn't always feel good. But once you meditate on the truth, it, 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 it's uh, the truth will set you free. And now you guys are being set free. You guys are. When is it? When, uh, God, uh, let me get, uh, Deuteronomy. So there's something required of us, right? From, from the Most High. Being his, now that you know your daughter of Israel, right? Your daughter of Zion. The promises and everything in the Bible pertains to you and your ancestors, your bloodline. It's not a, I'm going to convert, like, for example, right? There's a nation of people, right? Are the Chinese a nation of people? They're a whole nation of people. What you need to, right? You can't convert to being Chinese, right? You can't convert to being Puerto Rican. You can't convert to being a Ephraim. You were born one. It's not, it's not about a religion. It's your bloodline. It's a, it's a rich bloodline chosen by God to do work for him and service for him on the earth, right? So let's see what God requires of us as children of Israel. Let's read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel. And now Ephraimite, Boricua, right? Read. What doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Now that you know you're an Israelite, what does God want from you? Let's read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Fear God, because that's the beginning of understanding. Read. To walk in all his ways. So at this time, this Moses speaks. What are the ways that he's talking about? Moses just received the commandments of God. That's the way we're supposed to walk in the Torah law. The instructions. Keep reading. And to love him. Uh huh. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Repeat that part again. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So we want to serve God, right? We want to be a servant, correct? So let's see how we serve God. Read. To keep the commandments uh -huh. of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So the commandments that were given to us, that's how we serve them. And they were given to us for our good. Me knowing not to kill my brother, that's a good thing. Me not stealing from him, right, and running off, that's a good thing. The commandments were given for our good. Don't kill, don't steal. Don't worship other gods. These were things for our good to keep us close to our God, right? Because we all want to love God, correct? What is the love of God? 
we'll get it for you. Three? Uh, three, five? Oh, yeah, four. 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 Three, four. The book of First John, chapter 3, verse 4. New Testament, right? We just read from the Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament. Let's see something change. Whosoever committeth sin. Uh, five, five, six, five. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. Right, keep going. When we love God and keep his commandments. And we Moses is for He's not teaching anything different. When we love God, we keep his commandments. For example, you have children? Uh, but you hear, you hear that your mother, I'm assuming? Right, okay. If, if. Your daughter doing everything opposite of what you told her to do when she was growing up. Is that love? Or if she's obeying everything you're saying, is that love? A good and obedient child, that's a loving child to their parent, right? We're supposed to be loving children to our parent and our, our father and obey, right? So let's keep reading. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments, uh -huh. and his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard to do. It's not hard for me not to see it. It takes more work for me to take his wallet and run. Yeah. That takes work. It's not hard for me not to kill you. It's easy for me to live in peace with my brother. Keep God's commandments. That's God's love. So if anybody's saying, oh, God's love is something other than that, they're, they're opposite of the Bible. God's love is to keep his commandments. Uh, Verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God uh -huh. overcometh the world. You overcome this world, right? And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. And that was victory. To overcome the world by obeying God's commandments, that was what we considered victory. Not getting a mansion and this prosperity God. That wasn't a, a victory because these are being things. They disappear. Being in, in, in perfect harmony and connection and obedience to God, that was the victory. That was the win. But we're taught something else. Right? Like, I never heard these things until I came into this truth. Right? Uh, yeah, I got the one? Yeah. Uh, let's get uh, Psalms 119. 119 and... Uh, uh, if you got, but uh, if you got any questions, just feel free to ask. Like we're just here teaching, sharing knowledge, trying to wake our people up. But long story short, right? This is you being born again. You weren't uh, 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 Ephraimite this morning, but now you know you're a daughter of Ephraim, one of the daughters of Israel. Do you have information like where I can get the information? Yeah, yeah.